Okay, this is going to be another example of finding critical numbers, and this was just the definition of critical numbers that was discussed in the first example. So here we're going to find the critical numbers of um, x times the square root of 16 minus x squared. Um, the first thing I always do, again, if there's a radical present, um, a square root present, um, I just go ahead and rewrite that to the one-half power. Okay, so when I look at this, I think the two rules we're going to have to use are going to be the product rule, because, well, I've got one piece, we can call that F, we can call the other one G, so we're going to have to use the product rule. But then when we take the derivative of the G piece, we'll also have to use the chain rule on that guy, or gal, whatever it is. Alright, so when I go to take the derivative, I've got to use the product rule. So if I take the derivative of F, I'll get 1, I leave the other part alone, 16 minus X squared to the 1 half power. Okay, the product rule, I remember, has a plus in it. Okay, and then I leave the x alone. And then I have to take the derivative of the 16 minus x squared to the 1 half power using the chain rule. So the 1 half will come out front. I leave the inside alone. I've got to take 1 away so that I'll make it to the negative 1 half power. And then I have to multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is negative 2x. Okay, so, so a little long here for sure, but... It's just how it goes. So that's f prime, that's g, there's f, and all of this stuff is our g prime. Okay, so I'm just going to simplify this down a little bit. On the first part, we have 16 minus x squared to the 1 half. Um, and then notice I've got a 1 half and a negative 2. I'll cancel out the 2. The negative I can bring out front, so that'll take care of the negative. I've got an x and an x, that'll give me x squared, so that'll take care of my x's. And then the only thing I'm left with is the 16 minus x squared to the negative 1 half power. Okay, so at this point, um, we've got to factor things out. There's two different ways. We could get common denominators, um, or we can factor. Um, I like to always just factor things out. Notice there's a 16 minus x squared to the 1 half in the first part. There's a 16 minus x squared to the negative 1 half. Well, when we factor, you know, think about if it was x squared plus x to the fifth. The thing you would factor out is x squared, and you'd have 1 plus x to the third left over. And the thing I want you to notice is, hey, we pull out the smaller power, okay? I'm going to do the same trick here. So again, you know, there's many ways to get to the, the final thing I'm going to get to. Um, this is just the way I do it. So I see a 16 minus x squared. I'm going to factor that out. I factor out the smaller power. Well, 1 half or negative 1 half. Negative 1 half is smaller. And then I have to put something back in brackets so that when I multiply it out, I get everything back. The first part is usually the stuff that confuses people. So I'll, I'll have a 16 minus x squared. Okay, I've got like bases. I have to multiply to what exponent. Um, I need to multiply by something so that I get 1 half. And remember, even though we're multiplying like bases, we're adding the exponents. So negative 1 half plus 1 will give us positive 1 half. So that's the exponent we need is just to the first power. So I'm just going to leave it off. And then minus x squared will be the thing left over um, to give us the second term if we were to distribute it out. Well, now we can rewrite this. We're getting close. In the numerator, I'm going to get 16 minus 2x squared. If you think about this, this step uh, right before my last equal sign, if you think about that as being a fraction divided by 1, well, this negative exponent could go to the bottom, and we would have 16 minus x squared to the positive one-half power, okay? Or we could write that again as a square root. So now we've got the derivative all nice and simplified. Okay, so we still have to find our critical numbers. We still have to find our critical numbers. That was, I believe, a 2x squared. Now I've already forgotten. Um, certainly it should have been. Okay, so... All right, so now this again is our derivative, g prime of x. And it says we have to figure out what makes this equal 0. So g prime of x equal to 0. That means we have to set the top part equal to 0. 
Well, we could pull out a 2, and then we would have 8 minus x squared equals 0. And then if I um, divide by 2, I'll get just 8 minus x squared equals 0. And this will now factor simply as um, square root of 8 minus x, and then square root of 8 plus x. So it's the difference of perfect squares. And that means our potential candidates are x positive and negative square root of 8. Okay, so we'll have to check these here in a second to make sure they're in the domain of the original function. And then when we look at um, setting the denominator equal to 0, because again, that, that'll tell us where the derivative is undefined. Well, then we'll have 16 minus x squared to the 1 half equals 0. If we square both sides, well, if we square both sides, it'll get rid of the square root. Um, and then we simply are left with 4 minus x, 4 plus x after we factor. And that says we get x equals positive and negative 4. Okay, so again, we have to check, check these to make sure that they're in the domain of the original. Notice if I plug in positive or negative 4, inside of the g function, the one I have labeled as g, will simply get 0. But I can take the square root of 0. Um, I'll get either positive or negative 4. But positive and negative 4 will certainly be, um, it'll give me 0 out, and that's a number, so there's no problem that's in the domain. Likewise, if I plug in positive or negative square root of 8, I'll get, well, positive or negative square root of 8 out front. Then I'll either get 16 minus 8 or 16 plus 8. Excuse me, that's crazy. Actually, whatever one we plug in, positive or negative, we square it. Then we'll always get 16 minus 8, which is just 8 to the 1 half, which is defined. Whew, forgive my mistakes here. I'm under the weather. Um, that's my excuse, at least. So um, in either case, again, um, they'll be defined. And that's it. That means all of these will be critical numbers, positive and negative square root of 8, as, long, as well as positive negative square root of 4.